there's a development of the comics, of Jewish comics and of Jewish art. So we have the death of modernism and the rise of the postmodern graphic novel and the rise of postmodern identity art, all at the same time. This is 1975 to 1979. 1980s is the art boom in New York and in the world became all these big names like Julian Schnabel, David Sally, like Anselm Kiefer in Germany who kind of ripped off Jewish themes by being German, don't ask me how. Um, he did, but he did. This is funny to me, like Kiefer's father was a, a Nazi officer or something. I don't know if you know, Kiefer was a very big Jewish artist, uh, German artist, Not as an aside. He did a whole series on the Kabbalah. If any of us in the room wanted to do a series on the Kabbalah, we would get no play, but because he's German, he got all well, his play. Okay, another, another issue. Um, in the show are a graphic novels of incredible power that are the kind of children and stepchildren of Mouse and of a contract with God. We have Road to Modan's Exit Wounds, and again, this whole thing of Israelis, Richard mentioned it, and um, we're gonna mention in a minute, um, in Israel, using comics as a serious means of reflection about the political kind of horror, discontent, complexity of the political situation. So uh, the book Exit Wounds, we have J.T. Waldman's Not the Israel, My Parents Promised Me, which is an incredible book by J.T. Waldman. Harvey Picar, who is a comics legend, who did not uh, draw comics but wrote them, who some of you may know from the movie American Splendor, was a big hit in this country, it was a commercial movie, movie. Uh, was also on Letterman a lot of times. There's a portrait of him out in the hallway, so I, I suggest you take a look at that. Uh, Julian Bolage, who's not, oh, Bola, Bola? Am I saying that right, the German way? Okay, I uh, did a great book called Ghetto Brother about a Puerto Rican guy who was a gang leader in the South Bronx, who found out as an adult, guess what? I'm Jewish, my mother was Jewish, and he found that he was the descendant of Murano Jews from uh, Puerto Rico and Cuba. Uh, he had a life-changing event, bringing gangs together. We have two of the pages out in the hallway. Check that out also, okay? Um, a few more minutes about the fine art picks, then I'll turn it over to Amy. Um, so like I said, in the 80s, in the 70s and 80s, there was this rise of the postmodern movement. And again, I'll use these terms for those of you who are not art fans, okay? Formalism is the age of like, excuse me, abstraction, kind of one rule fits all. In postmodernism, there's a million styles, a million rules, a million sizes fit all. There's all kinds of narrative work, there's all kinds of subject matter, uh, essentially, and all kinds of qualities. So what used to be in Clement Greenberg's time in the 50s, a Jackson Pollock is a bunch of splashes and we can discuss it. Now there's a million kinds of criteria, okay? Um, there are several artists in the show that use comics as a source material. Now, if you go back to Andy Warhol, Andy Warhol did Superman, he did do Superman. A lot of you know Warhol because he's very famous. Warhol uses Superman in a very ironic way. It's like, ha ha ha, isn't this funny that a comic book is so low and I can make it art and I can sell it for $100,000, ha ha ha. Now, we can debate, it's a deadpan irony, is it real, is it not real? And point of fact is, I don't think Andy Warhol loved he did love comics, but I don't think he thought they were art, but I don't think he cared, okay? By the 80s, I think those old, the old hierarchy, the old pyramid had been blown to smithereens. So in other words, artists like Archie, like me, like David Wander, could take a Superman comic book and treat it the same way like a Michelangelo, like a David, like a Corbet, and, or like a real person, and use it as source material for other kinds of art. And that's part of the postmodern revolution, that you can use anything you want, and it's not embarrassing. It's all grist for the mill, it's all okay, okay? Let's talk about Archie for a second. Archie is in the Jerusalem Biennial. He's a very important artist. Archie ran, uh, essentially made his name painting the synagogue in Brooklyn where I was raised, uh, Ben Yosef in Brooklyn, and he did 5,000 square feet of murals, okay? The piece in the show is called Had God Yah, which is from Passover, and he does an incredible thing. What he does is this. There, he derives the painting from a Morrissey Gottlieb painting, which is called Jews Praying in a Synagogue on Yom Kippur. And Morrissey Gottlieb was a very early Jewish modernist from 19th century Poland. Gottlieb 
lived a bifurcated life as a Jew and as a Polish artist. He went to Polish Academy, yet Jews at that time lived a kind of very restricted, blinkered kind of life. He paints his synagogue, his rabbi, himself, and Italis on Yom Kippur, looking out at the audience the same way that Raphael looks out at the audience in School of Athens. So for a Jewish artist to do that in the 19th century is incredible. He's breaking all kinds of boundaries. I, ca I can't tell you like the kind of like mirrors that he's smashing by doing that, okay? Archie takes that image and compares and con contrasts it to the Paschal Lamb from Passover in the Hot God Yah story. So he's essentially saying that Gottlieb as the Jewish artist is like the Paschal Lamb, the sacrifice for Passover. He's saying this incredible thing about the Jewish artist and about the nature of Jewish art in that piece. In my piece, which is on the other side of that, it's kind of send up of the, again, of the Superman myth, and we've been talking about that tonight. The painting is called House of L. Um, it's a take on a Renaissance kind of painting and a, on a Roman fresco. It's me as the donor in a Renaissance painting, me as Superman in the George Reeves pose, me wearing an Orthodox kind of from hat. I grew up in Orthodox Brooklyn. Uh, with my beard, with my Jewish nose and mid middle-aged body and toe, still as the Superman myth. So it was an exploration of like the Superman myth within Western art and within the idea of being a, a Jewish artist. David Wander does the piece on um, Joseph and he uses 50s crime comics like a cinema noir, kind of Charlie Biro, crime does not pay comics. He conflates it with the history of totalitarianism that piece is out there too. So the Joseph myth with uh, being in bondage in Egypt and Mitzrayim with Hitler, Mussolini and Franco and wearing those kind of uniforms so you can see that kind of thing. So postmodern art lets you look at something and riff off it in a way, in an open-ended way and make you make associations, cultural, religious, artistic, aesthetic associations and bounce off them, essentially. Um, so, what I would like to do now is, at this point, historically in the exhibition, uh, Amy came into it and brought in other pieces and I didn't wanna take away her thunder a little bit. So I'm going to introduce Amy Rubenstein with some of the other pieces in the show. And then I guess, will we have time for a Q and A? We could have question and answer, I guess. Okay.